the interesting thing is block 59 is fairly close to block 42. Block 42 is the one that had a lot of the, the problems and things. Uh, me and my brothers being younger was not involved in much of the decision making or going to those things because we were, well, I, at least I wasn't uh, privileged to have to worry about the uh, the questionnaire for number 26 and 27 or, or one of those, the two of those uh, on the questionnaire that uh, had to be, be filled out. So it, it didn't seem to bother us that much other than to the fact that we were loyal to America. And you were able to communicate this to your father or your father's wishes were communicated back and forth to, to you through in Missoula and, and to Thule? Yes. Uh, so you could write letters back and we, forth? We would write, of course, the dad did not write too good as far as English is concerned, but then, but still some of the, the letters that we would get, they were like the, the V-mails that they had, one, one sheet, but they would be censored uh, to the point where you couldn't tell what was really going on in case there were some things that, that looked uh, kind of suspicious. Uh, but uh, we were more loyal to America. We had never been to Japan ever in our life. Of course, Dad lived there and uh, things like that, but then, oh. Uh, what, why was there a difference between, say, you and, you know, the folks in Block 42? And how do you understand all that? Well, I would say that the, a lot of the kibis, the people that were ed educated in Japan, would have more feelings towards Japan. Uh, my father, if he uh, was uh, stayed long in Japan, he would probably feel the same way. But he's been in the States since maybe early uh, 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 1910 or even prior to World War One. So. Uh, I think his uh, attachments, uh, things, connection with Japan was not as strong as many of the others that were recently in Japan. Oh, uh, I don't know. But that would be my uh, uh, way I would feel why he was more loyal to the United States. And so how did you get along with different factions in camp? Well, most of the people in our block were pro-American. Now, we, many of us decided that we're going to, to leave uh, and uh, go to the other camps or relocate out. Uh, it, it's a hard decision at time because here again, you're, you're brought into camp, you have nothing left, and uh, where could you go without a trade or anything? We're still going to school. Uh, my father was not with us at the time, and then what he could do is maybe farm, uh, since uh, his equipment and things were all confiscated, and uh, all his uh, supplies and things would be outdated anyway, since he hasn't taken pictures since uh, really around 1935 at the latest. So uh, there was nothing left in that profession for him. Did you feel that education was the way to go to perhaps get out of camp? Well, of course, uh, I was only in s sophomore, junior, and uh, it was not time for me to, to decide to go out of camp to, to work or anything without having a diploma. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. And besides, if you're less than uh, 18 or something, I don't think you, you could get hired unless you go to a farm. But you know how education is perhaps a way to, you know, yes. move off the farm and yeah. you know, get a job eventually. Was that a possibility for you to you know, do well in school? And, or was school a you know, farce? Or? Well, our father always did stress education. In fact, while we were still going to, to American schools, he would try to teach us Japanese. And uh, 
Since one of these days you may need to learn Japanese, so when you go to Japan, you can at least speak it and things like that. So he would try to instill on us to it's good to learn Japanese since you are Japanese anyway. So those are the things that I recall, even in camp, uh, after he rejoined us, he, he still wanted us to learn Japanese. <laughs>